In this episode of the Swing Report, we are covering the new Tour Edge Exotic 722 drivers, both the C722 and E722. If you've been following the channel, you'll be excited about this one. The C721 did really well in testing last year for Thomas. We've got the newest version here today. We'll do some testing, we'll do some hitting, we'll discuss all the technology and tell you everything you need to know. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. New drivers for 2022, Tour Edge Exotics 722 drivers, the C722 and the E722. Uh, Thomas, last year the C721, I think a lot of people that watched the channel were very impressed with that and how it performed in testing for you. Now as the newest version is here, uh, it's really exciting. I think they've, they've made some adjustments that I think are only going to benefit you in that C722 model. Right. I think C721 probably was the biggest surprise of 2021. Yeah. Honestly, the, the, the numbers we're getting with that driver, initial testing and follow-up testing, yep. it was performing really well, uh, even up against my gamer, which, mm -hmm. was, which was really impressive. But as you mentioned, there are some changes, especially with the C722 head. We now can play around with the weights, pushing that weight forward to chase lower spin mm -hmm. and chase faster ball speeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's kind of discuss the, the tech that's involved, at least in both of them. Uh, so we have kind of three key elements that uh, I think are kind of all kind of returning. They've been refined, but they're all returning from past models. Ridgeback technology, uh, which is kind of that, you can see it on the crown, it's that kind of black stripe down the middle. It acts as a spine for the club head, stabilizing it, and then especially stabilizing that face actually uh, throughout. Uh, carbon wrap tech, it's a little bit of a weighting uh, distribution uh, concept for Tour Edge with their drivers to maybe distribute some of that weight closer to the face for that st more stability yet. And then lastly, diamond face, uh, which is basically uh, the club face design that Tour Edge has uh, created here, which has 61 diamond patterns on the face, acting as mini trampolines to you know maintain that ball speed throughout uh, contact anywhere on that club face. So. Those three technologies were key in the last year's model of the C721 that was so good in testing. And uh, they're gonna power both the E722 and the C722 here this year. Right, and yeah, looking down at the club is kind of evident. You're still definitely seeing that Ridgeback technology mm -hmm. kind of right through the, through the club head. Uh, you can also see the carbon wrap on, on the outside yeah. there as well. So it's, you know, looking down at it, it's probably not the most cleanest looking golf yeah. club but you can definitely get all of the look if it's going to perform really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we have one thing to note too with that C722, the club head size is smaller actually. So making it more of a players oriented, uh, kind of maybe lower launching, lower spinning driver. We're at 445 cc, uh, and then of course the E722 is 460. So that's gonna be more of your uh, you know, forgiving higher MOI type driver. Yeah, and they're both adjustable still. Mm -hmm. So you've got the adjustable hosel when you can go down in loft, up in loft, you can make the face open, you can make the face closed, upright. So you've got some tuning to do after you kind of figure out which head, which shaft you want to do to really tune that bull flight. Yeah, and then speaking of tuning, the other thing we'll touch on today as well is the adjustable weight on the sole that you can use as well. So with the E722, there is a fixed 30 gram weight in the back kind of to, you know, launch that ball high in the air, bring that center of gravity down. And then in, this, in the C722, you have 20 and 5 gram weights that can be adjusted to the front or back. Uh, so you can really fine tune that, for example, put that 20 gram weight up front and really create a low trajectory and low ball flight uh, for you. And then, of course, the other way around it, it would enhance MOI and launch us a little bit more. So we'll play around with that today. But that's kind of the tech behind these drivers. Uh, and Tour Edge, I think in some ways, maybe has slept on a little bit. but. Uh, if you watched the channel over the last year, you saw that, that C721 was a really good performer and stacked up really well at the competition. Yeah, and the other thing that's great with, with Torage, given today's circumstances, is their 48 hour yeah. guarantee on getting the clubs in your hand. Mm -hmm. So that's one huge thing there. You know, USA based, based company, they're yep. going to get the clubs in your hand as fast as they possibly can. And they're at a slightly lower entry level price as well. Right. And those are you know, things that golfers are really looking for today, again, with all the supply chain issues other where, or elsewhere, excuse me, in the industry, uh, you know, Tour Edge is able to kind of mitigate those issues. So a lot of great technology, a lot of great features. And now the next part of the video is Thomas hitting some bombs. Uh, we'll start with the E722, maybe some, maybe more of a moderate swing that would be fit for that driver that will really amp up the speed with the C722. So I'm excited for that. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, we'll change up the, the loft, we'll change up 
the the weights, moving yep. those 20 and 5 gram weights back and forth and see what difference that makes. All right, so Thomas, you've got the E722 in your hands. Um, talk about, you know, look down at that dry red address. I imagine it's a pretty big footprint there. Right, it looks a lot kind of like the, the C721. It's, you know, high MOI driver, very, yeah. very forgiving, very large profile. Um, it looks like off-center hits, it's gonna be, you know, max MOI. It's gonna okay. be, be important. The weight's pushed, you know, there's only one 30 gram weight, so yeah. we know it's gonna help forgiveness. Yeah, and so we got that, that's 10 and a half degrees. We'll put it, we'll keep it standard. And then, uh, you know, you'll swing a little bit slower than you usually do just to see how that stacks up in terms of launch and distance still uh, and maintaining that distance there. Right, so yeah, so when I'm testing this one out, I've got the Ventus 6S, so the Ventus Red 6S that is. So this is a little little higher launching spinning sure. shaft. Um, I'll probably try and swing kind of low to mid 90s okay. when, I'm, when I'm testing this out and then we'll um, grad move on to the C722 mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a good start, wow. Low. That is some remarkable height. Right. right away. 100 feet in the air. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. That might be a touch further left. Yeah. Interesting that the spin actually stayed, actually went up there though. Yeah. Because I think, I think a question that people are going to have potentially when watching this, um, seeing that your spin is, is low like that is, is, you know, is, is that a good spin number? I mean, should I be, what I, I feel like I shouldn't be lower than 2000 maybe with this driver. Yep. And you know, our response to that as well, it's kind of the way that you swing with your attack angle, you're going to have low spin because his attack angle is going to be up in this case on this drive, 5.2 degrees. But, uh, if you swing, you know, a more steep at it and your attack angle is closer to zero, maybe one or two degrees positive, that spin will naturally increase for you. So that's just, if you're looking at spin and you think this is a super low spin driver, that's the explanation there. And it's only going to get probably lower even when you go into the C722. Right. Yeah. The only way that I could increase spin is by increasing the loft on the, on the club. Right. We're hitting 10 and a half degree head. Yeah. Uh, we'll bring out the, well, I think it'll be fun to bring out the TrackMan optimizer just to kind of mm -hmm. see what, what TrackMan would sure. tell us. Um, but yeah, you're right. Attack angle, spin loft. Sure. It's it's gonna influence low spin. That felt really good. Oh yeah. I mean, because you're hitting it 90 plus feet in the air with ease here, um, at you know well below 100 uh, miles an hour club speed. Right. And I always in a fitting, I'm always saying 30 to 40 degree for landing angle with the driver. Yeah. Uh, if I can get high ends of the, of the 30, pushing 40 degrees with the landing angle of the driver and keep the spin rate down and keep that launch up, then we're even better. Mm -hmm. But uh, that, well, that last one there was probably about as good as I could probably hit it for swinging it at mid 90s with my club speed. Another good one there. Yeah. Wow. It just seems like it's so easy to get that ball in the air. Yeah, it's, it feels pretty light. It feels pretty forgiving. Uh, I think the shaft and this head is a good combo based on kind of what I was swinging there about, what well, average 96 on the club speed. Mm -hmm. So that's five, and we can kind of bring up uh, some of the numbers here. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's gotta be kind of nice for someone who does swing under 100 miles an hour um, to see this video, and they're seeing the ball go 268 yards and they're seeing it carry 240 yards, and they're realizing that that's possible with this driver setup. Right. Uh, and so, you know, I think besides the one that you kind of tugged over here, you got four in the fairway. They're pretty consistent distance-wise there too. I think that's worth noting. So, and then easy launch, 16.4. Again, the average height was 93, uh, despite, you know, you swinging, you know, much slower than you usually do. Right, yeah, landing angle, what was it, 30, 36 to, mm -hmm. I think on, on average, 36.1. Yeah, that's that's great for a driver when you're swinging at 96 miles an hour. With, yeah. With, yeah. So I wanna show that too. So let's bring up the optimizer. Yeah. So here's the optimizer numbers on those five shots when I was swinging 96 miles an hour with a 10 and a half degree Tor Edge Exotics, yeah. the E722. Uh, 
Well, you can see right across the board, those numbers there are actually pretty good. You can yeah. see that I was almost fitting in, all the, in the blue zone, which is kind of ideal for max carry and total distance. You can see optimal was 240. My actual carry was two, 240. There you go. Optimal total distance is 263. My actual total distance was 266. So I was outperforming optimal with this yeah. swing at 96 miles that's, an hour. That's cool. Uh, yep. So you're, you're actually exceeding the you know, best expectations really that TrackMan has given the club speed uh, information that you provided them with right. those swings. I think that's probably a partially because you know, you had the spin just a little bit below that window. But again, it's, I mean, that's, that's nitpicking. You're still basically in that window there. Uh, and because of that maybe a little bit more rollout, but I mean, that's, it's good. It's again, very encouraging uh, to see that, you know, the E722 puts you in all of those windows uh, and that you'd be looking for. Yeah, and I was getting away with that because the launch angle, I was at the high end of the window. There you so go. Yep. goal when you're fitting, driver fitting, is high launch, low spin. The highest launch and low spin that you can get. It's going to give you the most distance. Mm -hmm. As long as you can control it, I'm okay with a little less spin. For sure, for sure. Yeah, clearly, you know, the the diamond face is giving you enough speed, and the Ridgeback technology is giving you enough stability to get that ball in the air and maintain that throughout the face. So yep. uh, now, you know, we can kind of get into uh, you know the C722, which is going to be a little different. It's going to look a little different. I kind of want to get your feedback on how that looks too before we hit here. So. All right. So I'm going to grab the C and put it next to the E and yeah what is it 15 cc smaller yeah yes. 45 yeah I mean it definitely looks like a, a little smaller profile looking down at the two of them yeah the, the E is you know quite a bit larger from heel to toe yeah I mean the the E722 almost looks just like the C721 is okay. kind of what, it, what yeah. it looks like to me a uh, new upgraded C721 and the the C722 is kind of a new design. It's just a smaller profile yeah. with some little extra yeah, adjustability. I mean, to my knowledge, Tour Edge hasn't really dipped into this kind of like player's uh, driver really cat. I mean, it's kind of like that low spin driver category before much. And so yep. it's cool to see them go into that. And with this option of adjusting the weights too, you could really make that a low spin. Because you see these manufacturers out there that have the kind of adjustable weight uh, part. You know, I know Cobra's got this year that it's 10 grams and three grams, right? And it, that's, I mean, now you have 20 and five, so you can really adjust things here with this one. It's, it's a lot, it's a big yeah. difference. Um, 20 gram difference is gonna make probably, or 15 gram difference between the two weights. We'll find out here, but I'm gonna guess it's gonna influence mm -hmm. spin and bolts. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so now we're moving on to C722. I've got the 20 gram weight in the back. Uh, it's a nine and a half degree head. Yeah. I'm going to leave the loft at nine and a half for now, uh, and I'm going to swing my normal speed um, with changing these weights up, and then we'll see which one's kind of performing the best, and then we'll play around with okay. my favorite when we'll I can turn the drop loft it down, down and see really how hit up far we can we can get try and here. hit some okay. bombs and see how it compares to the other models that I like I've been bombs with this year. I like that. Oh, that's a good start. Wow. Right. Look at all that height. That is launched into the sky. Right. I mean, keep in mind the heavy weight is in the yeah. back right now. I and mean, it's also nine and a half degrees of loft, which mm -hmm. is more loft than I play on my driver. Right. A little more toey there. Okay. So the spin would drop. Wow. Great miss. Still though. hit it 140 feet in the air. Yeah. That's pretty. That's actually really well done for how consistent that is, despite the toe strike. Because I mean, the carry distance you had a couple <laughs> yards drop there. And the total distance so. is the exact same. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Another really good one there. Yep. Wow, that that little baby draw is right there. Oh, sign me up for that shot right there. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's a little too high, but for you, it, yes, yeah. it is. Uh, <laughs> well, unless you're playing a you know perfectly calm day, you might take that. <laughs> right. I'm curious, actually. Bring up the optimizer real quick, just yeah. on that last shot. Let's just kind of see where where that falls. Yeah. So there you go. So this is a great example of telling me I have too much loft on the driver. Yeah. You can see spin loft a little little on the high side, ball speed a little on the low side, launch on the high side. Spin obviously was was pretty good, but look at that height. That the height. The height kind of fell out of the category. Yeah. Gosh, this, this optimizer is kind of cool. To, to it's, a, it's a fun thing to play now, around with. Yeah, I guess for the, you know, for the sake of the testing, we'll continue to do, uh, you know, with the nine and a half release, 
in the weight adjusting. Yep. We'll have to compare the weights. But then w when we de-loft it, I think we'll see some big distance. Right, you can see why I want to de-loft it. Yeah. Another good one. I feel like I'd hit that shot all day. Wow. Wow. You're very quickly approaching that 300 carry number today. Felt like another decent one, maybe a little more toey. There you go. I mean, it's like not, it's like it. I mean, you didn't skip a beat. You know, it's you, like you automatic the toe, right whatever, there. You know, yeah. Yeah, that dispersion pattern. That's a nice dispersion pattern. It's gonna be hard to beat. That's gonna be yeah. <laughs> that, that's very correct. Yeah. Uh, in total here, the spin was 2016 on average, 295 carry, 314 total, 147 smash. That's pretty good. And look at how close together those are on the map. Right. That the baby draw showed up every time, and you had, pl I mean, more than enough launch and height uh, to, you know, get the carry distance you were looking for there. So. Right. I mean, I could almost yeah. sacrifice a little bit of distance if I was going to hit it that straight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> on a windy day, that's enough height for you to maybe yeah. get thrown off. But, you know, we're, this is, that's great. That's why we test in here sometimes, because there's no wind to worry about. <laughs> uh, right. So now... This is where things can get really interesting. So this 20 gram weight was in the back. Let's move that forward and see, you know, how much that launch, that spin, that height is affected. All right. Wow, an immediate jump in the ball speed there. I think yeah. that's the highest One, ball speed. Today. 148. Everything else was stuck at 147. That definitely seemed to hit the screen a little bit lower. Yeah. There we go. Wow. That's a little bit closer to the trajectory that you want. Yep. Just for fun, bring up the optimizer again. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my favorite kind of tool here. There we go. We're only thing I'm leaving on the table is a little bit of ball speed by yep. not quite catching it in the middle. Mm -hmm. But, but launch, everything spin, else is perfect. Height. Right That's in the good. middle there. Wow. Jeez. It's a little bit more of that draw showing up on that one. Yep. Face a little bit more closed. But. A little more toey there. Yep, there's that low spin. Oh, yeah. That's some more of that gear effect working in there. Yeah, that, that height for sure has dropped, and that's yep. without even not even doing anything with the loft. Right. No, yeah. Right. That's have to think that that's weight related. That's a little right. Good ball speed. Yeah, I mean, so that last one was user error. Yeah, just the face a little open. Face was pretty far open, but the spin rate still stayed around at what, 20, what was 2300? In that last one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 2300. So. Yeah. I would almost consider that an outlier by looking at that dispersion screen. You it, probably uh, could take yeah, that let's out. Let's do that. Let's do that. We'll just do this. So. And that's just for the sake of our comparison here, we'll take that out. We can kind of focus on these ones here. So first of all, even with taking that one out, you can see that the, I, I think the dispersion of the, the 20 gram weight back is a little bit better. It um, is, for sure. You got five it, shots there and they're five. all, I mean, you could put a blanket over all those right yeah. now. We didn't have to take it, take it and miss it out. Right. It was just the same thing over and over. However, let's talk about kind of the gains that we do get by putting that weight right. forward versus having it back. Well, I mean, I picked up, well, I swung half a mile an hour faster, mm -hmm. but we noticed that I picked up two miles an hour of, of ball, ball speed. speed. So efficiency went up. So yeah. faster ball that speed. That went up. You see launch angle is almost two degrees lower. You launch see two down. height 15 feet lower. Yep. Landing angle not as steep. So there's, you know, and the spin dropped as well a little bit. So there's clearly a difference in the performance based on that weighting. And I think that I think it's interesting Tour Edge did that, and I like that they did that, that they, the weights are so different, where you know other manufacturers, there's not a 15 gram difference in those two adjustable weights. And then to have 20 grams to five grams, actually you can see and probably feel it too a little bit, the, just the difference that that creates on the trajectory. And yeah, launch angle I, speaks for itself, spin, I mean height, it's all there. Yeah, and it, the tech angle was the same. So the only thing that changed is by having that center gravity push forward, you're just yeah. able to get that launch to be a little bit lower with the same amount of loft on that club head. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's reducing I mean, it's spin and giving me more ball speed. 
yeah, it's really cool to see you know how it shows up so very clearly on TrackMan with all the differences. So, yep. um, all right. So now we wanted to we talked about dropping the the loft down uh, with the adjustable housel. You can go down or up two degrees. So you can effectively make this a seven and a half degree driver. Um, which weight setting do you prefer, and which one are you going to use for that for uh, that test? To chase distance, yeah, pure distance. Um, I'm going to keep the weight forward. Okay. Now I'm probably sacrifice. We're probably sacrificing about 100 RPMs of spin difference there. Yeah. Um, might give me a couple yards more if sure. I can keep that weight forward. I think accuracy. If you're focusing on accuracy, you can keep that weight back. Yeah. But clearly, the, the, head anyway. the weight back was helping you hit the same shot every time, basically. So. Yeah. All right. So we'll set you up here with a seven, or I guess down two degrees in loft. So it's set at lower, just keep in mind what that does is it kind of opens that face yeah. a little bit. Just like any other hosel. Went after it for sure. Yeah, I don't know if I caught that one perfect. Smash factor, 147. I mean, it's good. I didn't mm -hmm. quite hit it in the center though. You're really working on you know, squaring or getting that club face through, I can tell. Right. This is a good option, too, for someone that does hook the bowl yeah. by just putting it down and open that face up a little bit. Ooh, that. Bowl speed there. That is interesting. All right. Yep, there we go. There's the 300 carry number. Wow. And a little lower spin. Right when you hit that, it just seemed like it, you know, bounced off the club face a little bit. Uh, hotter and it was lower on the screen too. The launch was was lower than most of the rest of them. So, right. Yeah. I mean, three twenty five. That's that's pretty good. And it's dead straight with yeah. uh, even a fade on it. And my club speed's not as fast as it has been with some other testing. I was pushing mm -hmm. one sixteen. Yeah. One seventeen at one point, but it's pretty good. I don't know if I can hit it better than that last one, but we'll, oh, I bet you we'll can. try. Might be a little left. Turned it over just a little bit there. Get it at 300 carry again, though. Yeah, but my dispersion is going to go up. Hey, you're chasing ultimate distance here. This right, I get that. Might be a little right. Oh, wow. Spin stayed down on that one. It's just hooking left a little bit, but. Yeah. Ooh. That's good. That's a good ball to end on. You got the 170 ball speed. You right. had your highest carry of the day. I know you were, I think that's probably what you were chasing, wasn't it? That, that 170 ball speed there? I, I knew I was close. Yeah. 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 You were definitely right on the tail of that there, so. Uh, the dispersion will be fun to look at just because I could tell it was getting a little bit more out of control. And that happens when you go down in loft and open the face. And I know you're not used to that open face and you're a gamer, but uh, just you gain more distance once again. I mean, added a couple, well, basically three yards of carry and four yards total on average. Again, just the sacrifice of the dispersion there, which we kind of knew was coming. Right. Yeah. I mean, the question here is you look at the, the back weighting. 314 versus the forward weighting and two degrees less loft. Yeah. 323. Is it worth the nine yards? Right. And that's where we bring up this map because that's where, as a golfer, you, it's a question that you need to think about yourself is if you want to optimize your driver to max distance, all the, every yard I can get, you could gain 10 plus yards as Thomas did here today, but you sacrifice the accuracy of you know, the maybe more forgiving setup for you or the more accurate setup for you, which was the weight back for Thomas, which five golf balls very close to each other in the fairway and the rest of the setups there, especially this kind of, uh, you know, forward uh, down and loft setup, a little more wild, but certainly more distance. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge discussion that you've got to have with a fitter, regardless of what club that you're hitting mm -hmm. is, you know, is it worth it? Is it worth chasing right. that extra ball speed? Is it, or is it, you're just happy with being in the fairway right. and know that you're maybe a couple yards shorter, but 
I mean, 314 is nothing to be scoffed at. Oh, no. Really. And you know, I think that's nice that you have these options with C722. And then also E722 is even a more forgiving yet an easier launching yet driver uh, for maybe uh, you know, the golfers that don't swing as fast as you do. So, yep. um, I mean, seriously, some really good testing here. And you know, we kind of expected that from Tour Reg based on how you know, the C721 did for you. But uh, I mean, phenomenal stuff here once again. Right, great golf clubs, good options for regardless of what skill level you're at. All right, so Thomas testing complete the uh, Tour Edge Exotics 722 drivers, both the E722 and C722. Uh, really good stuff from both, and I think we're not surprised by that, but um, I think it was, it was good for us today to have you test the E722 a little bit slower speed. I know that's something, you know, our you know, viewers and commenters are always asking for is kind of the appropriate speed to test maybe those forgiving or high MOI clubs. So give me your thoughts on the E722, you know, you swing at that slower speed and maybe the golfer that's going to fit. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to categorize kind of in that, in that mid-90s for, for club speed. I mean, the average amateur male swings at like 94 miles okay. an hour with a, with a driver. So we're very, very close there. Um, that driver I had, it sat at 10 and a half degrees aloft. Now, if you swing a little bit slower than that, a little bit more loft would help keep within those numbers for, uh, for optimization. Yeah. Or if you hit down on it a little bit, your tech hang is a little bit lower. So there's, there's plenty of options there. Um, but I just want to show that, hey, that, that driver will work regardless of what club speed that you're hitting. Right, I mean, we were noticing it on, with the TrackMan Optimizer, we, look, we brought that up and we saw that it was basically fitting into all those windows that we were looking for uh, from a driver there. So uh, to me, it's just, you know, the player that doesn't swing super fast, maybe doesn't get the ball super high into the air, uh, or maybe just doesn't hit the center of the face that often. I think any of those players, really the E722 is going to be a benefit for you. There's that stability with the Ridgeback technology, added ball speed with the diamond face. It's all there to, to help you gain some of that distance back. Maybe you're losing it or maybe you just want more distance out of your game. You're going to get that with that driver. Yeah. E is extremely forgiving. Yeah. I, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, that's a good way to think yeah. about it because then the C722, not as much of an emphasis on extreme forgiveness. It's uh, more about, you know, that added ball speed, lower flight, and being able to work that ball a little bit. Right, and I think C, I think it stands for competition spec. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's just surprised me again, I guess. Yeah. I, mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised after one year of hitting the, the C721, but I'm pretty impressed with how well I hit it, regardless yeah. of where I had the weights. Whether the weights were in it all the way back, yep. the heavy weight that is, or the heavy weight was all the way forward. Yep. You know, I, it performed really well, and I think, end of the day, MOI, the clubs are designed the way they are with regards to forgiveness, and I think that orange circle kind of showed that right there. Right, yeah, that was the thing. Well, first of all, we should note, you know, the, the front back weighting is new with the, at least the C722 and the Exotics line, and to have that and see the big differences that we did, I think was really impressive, um, but then, like you mentioned, you can, you know, if it can fit a wide range of players because you can move that 20 gram weight back and get that forgiveness out there where your small orange dispersion was, you know, again, it was, I put a blanket over all five of those tee shots and then you can really optimize it, put that weight forward and you can drop it loft like you did and really chase, you know, 10 plus yards of extra distance. So, I mean, you need to have a decent speed, I think, to play this driver. Uh, but from there, it's kind of um, you know, up to the, what the player is looking for in their game. If they want max distance, you can get that out of this driver. If you want something that you can rely on but also keep spin down, you can also get that from this driver. Right, and I think, you're, yeah, it's, it's the, a way to reduce the spin rate. If a golfer has too much spin and can find the middle of the face pretty regularly, the C722 is a good option. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, there's, again, the tech, the same tech uh, in terms of those big three pieces, Ridgeback, the uh, carbon wrap, and then uh, the diamond face. It's all there in both of these drivers, but the weighting is where the thing really set, separate themselves, and we saw that today with the TrackMan testing. We saw Thomas optimize his distance and also put a really tight dispersion out there with that weight back. So golfers, if you're interested in the Tour Edge Exotics 722 drivers, either model, uh, you know where to go, second so swing to get fit by an expert like Thomas. We'll get you set up with longer drives, straighter drives, and ultimately they're gonna help you lower your scores with the performance we saw today. So Thomas, thanks for joining, giving your insight. Uh, again, Tour Edge has knocked it out of the park here in 2022. Yep, I agree. Golfers, come on in for a fitting at second swing. <laughs>